Welcome to this Palms demonstration video called Having a Blast. There are two main types of volcanoes, shield and strato. In this video, we're going to show you how to model what can happen to a stratovolcano's shape during an explosive eruption. The shape of a stratovolcano can be described as steep-sided, and they are often quite symmetrical, as these examples from Japan show. Stratovolcanoes tend to have magma that has a high viscosity, meaning it is very sticky, because it contains high levels of a mineral called silica. Higher concentrations of volcanic gases in stratovolcanoes means a lot of pressure can build up inside the volcano. This means they tend to have very explosive eruptions. These release hot ash, gases and lava bombs. Stratovolcanoes' explosive eruptions can radically change the shape of a volcano, blasting off the top or blowing out the sides of these steep volcanoes. An example of this happening was the eruption of Mount St. Helens in the United States, which erupted in 1980. This eruption radically changed the shape of the once symmetrical steep-sided mountain and created a horseshoe-shaped crater. In contrast, shield volcanoes tend to have higher temperature, lower viscosity magma, with less gas, and eruptions have faster moving lava flows that lead to the broader, less steep shape. We're going to show you how you can build a model of a stratovolcano and demonstrate an eruption in a much safer way. To build your stratovolcano model, you'll need the following equipment. An aluminium tray, scissors, bricks, blocks of wood or strong boxes to support the tray, clean sand, some tape, something like masking or gaffer tape works best, a squeezable bottle with a narrow pop top, we're going to show you two models using an empty sauce bottle and also a sports drink bottle. You'll also need a latex glove, an elastic band, water to dampen the sand and a marker. To start preparing your model, cut one finger from the latex glove. Also, mark and cut a hole in the centre of your aluminium tray so about one third of the top of the bottle can fit through. Be careful of the sharp edges when cutting the tray. Sit the tray and bottle on the bricks or blocks making sure you can reach the bottle under the tray to squeeze it. You may need to adjust the height of your bottle so it is stable and supported. Open the pop top of the bottle. Take the finger you cut off the glove and slide it over the bottle top. Secure it with the elastic band. It may be easier to take the top off the bottle to do this. Put the lid back on the bottle and test that the glove finger inflates when you squeeze the bottle. A tip if you're using an empty sauce bottle. You may need to use some sticky tape to hold the glove finger in place when you put the elastic band on as it slips off. Remove any air from the glove finger, then scrunch it down over the top of the lid. Tape around the bottle in the tray to keep it in place and seal the hole you cut. Dampen the sand with water, but don't make it too wet. Use small handfuls of damp sand to sculpt your steep-sided strata volcano. Cover over the glove finger and bottle top. Don't press the sand down too firmly, but make sure it will keep its shape. We're showing you the models we built using two different kinds of bottles. First, the empty sauce bottle. Make sure you don't have any cracks in the surface of your volcano. Then, the sports drink bottle. Try and get a symmetrical shape with steep sides. Allow the sand to dry a little. Sketch or take a photo of the shape of your stratovolcano model. To make your volcano erupt, grip the bottle under the tray with one hand. Be careful not to disturb the tray. Squeeze the bottle firmly in one quick motion. This is what happened with the sauce bottle model. And with the sports drink bottle model. You may like to add some tremors to your eruption also. So what happened? We can see in this slow motion video that the inflating glove finger breaks apart the top of the volcano. The glove finger is acting just like the expanding hot gases in a stratovolcano that build up pressure until they cause the volcano to erupt explosively. Did you see the chunks of sand being blown away? These are like the hot lava bombs that stratovolcanoes throw out. You can also see cracks or fissures that appear on the side of the volcano. Don't forget to sketch or take a photo of your erupted volcano and compare the shape to how it looked originally. What changes can you describe?
An extension activity you might like to try for fun is to model the lava flow of the other type of volcano we mentioned in the introduction, a shield volcano. You can use a similar setup, but this time fill the bottle with sauce, we use chocolate sauce, and don't put a glove finger on the top. Remember that the shape this time should be broad with a low peak. You may need to uncover the top of the bottle a little before squeezing. We had a bit of a lava fountain at the start too. Now that you've learned a little more about stratovolcano eruptions, here's some other things you might like to research. Find out more about some other stratovolcanoes around the world. What kind of rocks do stratovolcanoes produce? How hot is the lava in stratovolcanoes? What is the difference between active, dormant and extinct volcanoes? Thanks for watching this PALMS demonstration video. For more fun, hands-on earth science activities, visit our website palms.edu.au